Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students, we will study the second chapter of HRM that is role and status of HR department and HR manager. I am Dr. Shoma Sen Gupta, Kamla Nehru College, University of Delhi. This project is undertaken under DTH Swayam Prabha, MHRD, New Delhi. In this chapter, we will cover the following topics. Organization of HR department, staff role of HR department, role and status of HR manager, qualities and competencies of HR manager, strategic management of human resources. Let us understand the organization structure of HR department. First of all, we will take up the simplest HR department organization structure and that is the line organization. Like in case of management, in a line organization, strict line of authority flows from top to bottom. If we see this diagram, in HR department also, there can be a line structure. That means strict line of authority flowing from top to bottom. Say, if the organization structure is like chief executive and then different departmental heads, then we will take up the HR department only. So, personal manager or the HR manager is the head. And under him, four types of officers are there or four departments are there. The head of the four departments are personal or employment officer, training development officer, wage and salary officer and welfare officer and under each of the officer there are clerks. So this is a strict line authority structure or line organization structure and in this structure unity of command principle is uh, strictly followed and strict line of communication is also followed in this structure. The next organization structure which we are going to discuss is line and staff organization structure. Now HR department can also be organized as a line and staff organization structure. Now in line and staff organization structure, staff specialists are attached to line positions and these staff specialists only have advisory authority. So they can advise the line managers whether to implement those adv advisors or go by those advisors or not. It is the sole prerogative of the line manager. Now when we talk about HR department, uh, as a line and staff organization, we, we say that, uh, that we have discussed in the first module also that for other departments, the personal department can act as a staff function, uh, authority or staff function. That means it is giving advices and facilitating other departments. So personal department provides advice and assistance on personal matters to all departments without undermining unity of command. In the figure, you can see that line authority is shown by straight line and staff authority by a dotted line. This is the position of HR department vis-a-vis -vis the other department as a staff department. But within the HR department also, there can be line and staff organization structure. Suppose we take up the structure we have discussed in the previous slide, that is the line structure. We have seen that four officers are there. The personal officer, the training and development officer is there, the uh, recruitment officer and all these officers with, along with that, you can have dotted lines and staff positions can be attached to these line uh, 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 line structure. So what will happen? They will provide only the advisory services to these line positions. So uh, it will be the prerogative of the 
say personal manager to take up those advisors or go by those advisors or not so this is the line and staff organization but uh, in most of the organization wherever there is line and staff structure there, there uh, many a times we have found that disputes or differences may occur between the line staff line personnel and the staff personnel because they are uh, of different background the line people are experienced and uh, 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 on the other hand the staff are specialists so they they are uh, they may be straight from the uh, uh, educational institutions and uh, full of knowledge but le less of experience so then there are differences and it is the um, uh, job of the top management to bring uh, the two uh, types of people together so that they can coordinate with each other and take the benefit of each other. The next type of organization structure is the functional organization structure. Now in functional organization structure, the organization is again divided according to the functions. Say if we take the example of the personal department, it is again divided uh, uh, according to the functions like maybe an employment officer, the training and development officer, the wage and salary officer and the welfare officers are there and uh, under them uh, uh, in each of the departments clerks are working the special thing about the thing about the functional organization is that the functional head has full functional authority over the function that means wherever that function is performed he has the complete authority and anything related with any problem related with that uh, function it will be resolved by that functional head only so he has the authority over other departments and every employee reports to several functional heads and that's why it violates the unity of command. Now the um, genesis of this type of functional organization is actually scientific management given by F.W. Taylor. So one of the technique of scientific management is functional foremanship if you remember whereby there are eight bosses over one employee. So there are four in the uh, shop, four in the office and each employee is reporting to eight bosses. So we have uh, and these bosses, they have complete functional authority and specialization. Now, uh, there also we have seen that it violates the unity of command principle. The good thing about this is that you get the benefit of specialization. So they have the functional head have complete knowledge about the function and wherever it is performed that function is performed he is uh, the clerk will report to him regarding that function so uh, suppose uh, for example there is this welfare officer so if a clerk is even working under wage and salary officer for every matter related with welfare he will consult the welfare officer likewise a clerk working under training and department also will report to welfare officer for any kind of problem related to welfare so the welfare officer will sort out any kind of problem related to welfare even if it is performed in other departments. So this is the functional organization. Now um, there can be a divisionalized organization structure also. So these divisions can be made on the basis of certain criteria say certain function. So it may be a functional division it may be a geographical division, it may be product based division or it may be any type of shift based divisions are also possible. But here we are discussing a geographical kind of divisionalized structure. Say if it is a geograph geographically divisionalized structure, the, the structure will be like uh, they, there are uh, uh, say only personal officers are there but they are handling four different divisions or geographical uh, areas so we can have personal officer northern division personal officer southern division personal officer eastern division and personal officer western division so uh, this personal staffs they are attached to different divisional officers unity of command is maintained and in a geographically divisionalized organization you can take care of each nuances of each and every division every geographical area the culture of that area you can recruit people from there only you you can know the la local languages so you can better interact with the 
पर्सनल ओवर देयर सो द पर्सनल ऑफिसर एट डिविजनल लेवल इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू द लोकल डिविजनल मैनेजर सो दिस इज द स्ट्रक्चर द एडवांटेज इज एज आई टोल्ड यू दैट यू कैन टेक द बेनिफिट ऑफ लोकल एम्प्लॉयमेंट लोकल पीपल यू विल नो द कल्चर यू विल नो हाउ टू डील विद दैम द लैंग्वेज यू कैन नो Uh, the customs you will know so that is the benefit of a geographical divisional and there will be less mobility of uh, employees from one uh, area to another they don't have to leave their hometown so that is the benefit the uh, problem with uh, this type of structure is that you will find that the facilities are duplicated in the sense that uh, in each of the division you will have to have the whole department so uh, it will mount the cost of operation of the organization now uh, newer types of organization structures are coming up and one of the uh, organization structure can be a matrix organization structure as the name suggests it's a grid like structure now what happens in a matrix organization is that there are first of all uh, a line kind of authority is flowing from top to bottom in the sense say we are talking about the whole of the organization not only the personal department so there is a chief executive and then the general manager and after that different departmental heads are there engineering personnel marketing finance under each of these division there are people working in this division now if if it is a big organization and it is a project kind of organization whereby they are taking up out um, uh, um, uh, a big turnkey project now they have to deploy people to each of the project suppose this organization has uh, two projects in hand and so they will deploy people from each of these divisions like engineering personnel and marketing and finance to the two projects so there will be people uh from engineering department working in project a and then in project b uh, others in project b personal department some of them are going in project a some of them in project b likewise in marketing and finance so a team is uh, created for a particular project whereby there are people from different divisions so employees have two superiors one the personal manager vertical dimension first functional head and the project manager the horizontal dimension so again you can see that uh, it is violating the unity of command principle because he is taking orders from two types of bosses one is the functional head and the other one is the project head now pro there are certain responsibilities of the project head and certain responsibilities are of the functional head so the functional head head has a uh, authority over on the function so whenever this employee wants to know anything about that function he will consult the functional head and final promotion authority is also there with the functional head but whatever work is related to the project for that he will consult the project head so project head will look after a particular project now uh, there is another problem like blending the people from different divisions because they have uh, a different kind of orientation so it is the du duty of the project a uh, project manager to Uh, uh bring a, a kind of a coordination between the people uh from belonging to different departments and uh the, you have to uh, uh bond uh, create a bond between the uh, people belonging to different departments because now they will be working on a particular project so matrix structure is suitable when organization tasks are uncertain complex or when an organization has to cope with more than one project so once the project is completed these employees from different department they go back to their parent department so there is no fear of losing the job and concentrated attention can be paid on a particular project and after the completion they go back to their parent department